Bye piggies, see you in Virginia. Wow, there they go. I can't believe it. Yep, that's me, sending my pigs across the country. You're probably wondering how I got here, so let me explain. Greetings, loved ones, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a little gift for you. You wanna know what it is? You already know what it is by the title. It's a moving vlog, and I'm giving it to you here on a little silver platter. This is your gift for 10 years on YouTube. Thank you so much. I celebrated my 10 year anniversary actually on June 30th, but it was the first day, full day, that we were back in town after our like six weeks away for getting married and the honeymoon and going to Vermont and touring houses and all those things that you saw in a previous vlog. And my 10 year anniversary honestly slipped my mind. I had it on a calendar, but I didn't look at the calendar on June 30th. So then I didn't actually realize until like mid July that I had just past 10 years and then I did like a belated kind of announcement celebration situation on Instagram and stuff like that so thank you so much for 10 years I can't believe it like literally started this channel at 15 and here I am still at 25 and you guys are watching me get ready to move across the country with my husband still not used to that word <laughs> where are we moving Rue? Vermont Vermont where everybody has tiny paws Vermont Vermont I'm gonna put my face in the snow for a month. For a month. <laughs> she really liked that song. But I figure for YouTube, we'll just start the moving vlogs as your present because people have been anxiously awaiting. Megan, what's happening? What are the updates? Did you find the house in Vermont? Why are you packing stuff on Instagram? What's going on? That's been my main DMs over the past like week. So here's the current state of the union. No, we did not find our house in Vermont. The market where we're looking in Southeastern Vermont is quite small. There's literally like one new listing a week maybe. And while we do have a realtor who's like touring those houses for us and updating us on what they look like and if we should be interested, we have not had any hits yet. But that being said, when we got back from all of those travels for the wedding and honeymoon and stuff, we put in our 60 days at the end of June, meaning that we would be out of this house by September 1st. And so it's like either way, we're moving out of this house because we rented and we told our landlady we'd be gone. So we've just been doing like a lot of packing and prepping and preparing the land really and taking down like structures and moving stuff and giving away a bunch of our belongings on buy nothing Facebook pages and gifting things to friends, cleaning out the bar and just all of the things. So that's what we've been doing for the past week. And now you might be wondering, well, Megan, where are you gonna go if you haven't found your home in Vermont, but you need to leave this house by September 1st? Great question, thank you so much for asking. We are going to move, not only the pigs, the pigs are actually moving first, which I'll get into in a second, but we're moving the pigs and all of our belongings to Finley's parents' guest house in Virginia. And we both just decided that we wanna be on the East Coast to make these decisions really about like, are we gonna get a temporary rental in Vermont until we find said home that we wanna buy? Or are we just gonna live at Finley's parents' guest house and not pay rent? But also I was talking about the downsides of that in a past vlog where like Virginia is not close to Vermont. It's not like a cute fun day trip, you know, to get in the car and drive eight hours <laughs> to tour a house and that's not not ideal to be like living in Virginia during the time where we want to be ASAP tour in those houses. You know what I mean? Like first people there, first people to make the offer. The housing market is still unreal competitive. People are like waiving inspections, which we would never and people are like paying cash up and just doing so many offers on homes literally the first time that they see them. And while that's all fine and dandy for them, it makes it really competitive. So when you see a new listing, you're like, okay, gonna go tour it literally right now. And if we temporarily lived eight hours away in Virginia, it wouldn't be easy for us to go and tour these houses immediately. So. Finley is very, very much so like we should get a temporary rental in Vermont, but I'm like, sounds like we'll have to move three times. So that's obviously not ideal because we would have to move from Oregon to Virginia unload all of our stuff and return the moving truck and then load it up again and then move to a temporary rental. And then when we find our home to buy, we would have to load it all up again and move everything to the house that we bought. So that would be six times loading and unloading the moving truck. So it just sounds like a lot, but it's definitely not like impossible. But either way, the pigs are moving first. 
So this is what we're currently doing in this vlog, which is chapter one of the moving vlogs. The other day, our neighbor John came over with his forklift and he lifted up the pig's little tiny house that they sleep in and he laid it in the bed of our farm truck. And similar to what we did during fire evacuation when we had to evacuate the pigs, they can get up and down a wooden like plywood makeshift kind of ramp into the bed of the truck. But now they have the safety and security of that little tiny house. So they can go up there, chill in there. They're used to that space. They feel safe in that space and we did not have that built for them in 2020 when we had to evacuate i think we built it later that year in december i'm pretty sure and showed it in like vlogmas or something so they're going to be traveling across the country in that and then finley's also going to pack a cooler in the back seat of the truck filled with ice and every two hours he's going to scoop ice on them make sure that they have water make sure that they're eating every day i know some of you are like Oh my God. But the alternative is hiring a livestock shipment service, which does the exact same thing. They keep them in there, but they're with a bunch of animals that they don't know. They have to get vaccinations for it to be amongst other swine. They are being driven by somebody who also doesn't know or really care about them. It's just their job. So Finley's gonna do it. He's going to care for them. They're going to be good to go, okay? They've already done a journey in the back of the truck and granted it was during a very stressful time when it was very smoky skies and it wasn't ideal. And now we're doing it in August, so it is definitely warm and that's why he has to ice them down because pigs don't sweat. That's why pigs roll around in the mud to cool off is because they don't perspirate. Anyways, so the pigs are leaving with Finley maybe tomorrow. We're kind of trying to figure it out like an exact time because we are also hitching a little U-Haul trailer to the back of the truck and towing a bunch of basement stuff behind them. We're gonna make the bed really secure so that they don't jump out. There will be no shifting of the house because there's gonna be like ratchet straps all around it to be secured. And we're drilling like ventilation holes into the top of the house as well. So maximum airflow can come in and out, okay? so. I'm talking a lot, but that's what this vlog is going to be, all right? Preparing the pigs for their big journey across the country with Finley and packing the basement into the U-Haul that's going to be towed behind them. So we've been doing a lot of like mechanic work on the truck, making sure that it's good to go for a cross country trip. And that's what's been happening over the past few weeks. And that's also why I haven't had like so many videos going up because there's just a lot going on in my life. And honestly, I think I've said this before, or maybe you guys already know this about me. I mean, it's been 10 years. We know everything about each other, you know? Well, you about me, me not about you. Anyways, <laughs> I have a lot of trouble with change and I'm so excited to move to Vermont. Like you don't even know. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I know that it's a great next state for us to move to. And even if it doesn't end up being like our forever home, I'm just excited to move there and check it out and see what it has to offer, you know? And so it's not that I'm not excited about the move. It's just that there's so many logistics that go into moving a five acre farm. And I'm just trying to make that real for you guys. Like, so you can see what it's like when you have to move something like this and just show all of the aspects. But a huge aspect of that has been me just feeling really like sad and just honestly useless in ways and i think it's because like finley's been doing so much like so much landscaping every day doing heavy lifting preparing the truck doing like a lot of that grimy work that i'm not necessarily that good at and so i feel as though over the past like two weeks I've just been being oddly hard on myself, being like, even though you're like still keeping up with all of your household things and all of your work things, for the most part, you know, I have definitely neglected the vlogs and I apologize for that because the last vlog that you guys saw on here was with Lindsay, but I have been uploading every single week to here and Patreon. There's been a video every week on one of those platforms. And so it's not like I'm completely neglecting, like sharing my life, you know what I mean? But just, I know I've been lacking on the vlogs and trust me, I know, okay? I'm the hardest on myself. I'm my harshest critic. But yeah, I messaged my therapist last night and I was just like, honestly, I feel so depressed right now. I just feel like I'm really struggling with 
so much change right now in my life and I'm so excited and like that's real and that's true but also the other side of it is like I'm so scared I didn't want to cry but now I'm venting I'm gonna try to keep the tears to a minimum but I just feel like in the past like year and a half of us being in Oregon I've made like more friends more like real valid friendships than I have in my entire almost five years of living in Oregon. So it's just like, why now? You know, like, why does it always have to go this way? Like, why wasn't there the same kind of like social enrichment of my life throughout every single year? And sure, I've had like a scattering of friends throughout the years, you know what I mean? But I just feel like over this past year, it's been like bumping, you know, where I'm like finally in the flow of things here. But then also acknowledging that like, I don't wanna buy a house here and raise my family here. And I wanna have kids and I want to to, you know move with my husband and find that place for us and start nesting and like start our life together you know and like Oregon does not fit the bill for what we want and even though we thought that it did like Oregon I've been saying this a lot to like my friends and stuff like Oregon shaped us like into the people who we are now it taught us that we want to be like farmers and that we're like interested in that stuff and that homesteading and living off the land and all of that kind of stuff like that is appealing to us and we want more of it and also like our neighbors and friends and everybody in Oregon like Oregon just has really nice people people are just so good to us here and it's gonna be hard to leave and I'm scared to leave them you know when you're just like ugh, that's not even the word I wish there was another word in my vocabulary for the feeling that I'm feeling because I'm not like scared to make the leap I think I'm just like anxiously awaiting the next thing and this in between right now of like packing and like still hanging out with my friends and like savoring these moments like it's just bittersweet like everything is just bittersweet because I know that when we move I'm gonna be like oh my god I just want to like start decorating a house but I know that once we get there it's like we haven't even found the house yet you know what I mean so I guess like that part is also like uncertain <laughs> I think that's like the feeling that I'm feeling right now I guess the thing is like I need security and safety within each part of my life and that's why change is so hard for me is because it's like upheaval you know when i really thrive on being like a rooted and grounded person and like nesting in my little spaces and it's not to say that i can't make you know finley's parents guest house my space if we end up staying there and it's not to say that if we have to move to a temporary rental that we can't you know make that our space but i think it's just because like my brain right now is like you're buying a house to move to okay a good house that you can renovate and make a series of renovation videos on YouTube and get prognot and have kids and do all of these things like I think my brain is still like in that mode so all of the other factors it's like hard for me to accept that like I have to you know kind of allow this to be in a state of flux like the moving process and the buying a house process is such in a state of flux that like there are other factors that we have to consider and keep on the plate and I'm such a person who's like well I've made up my mind and I'm buying a house and I'm moving to the house and I'm never renting again <laughs> like that's literally me Ugh. I could literally talk about this for so fucking long but like this is the state of the union right now this is the state of me this is how I'm feeling okay and there's a lot going on and we're packing and we're moving and life goes on and days go on and I'm still working and streaming and filming for you and doing brand deals and all of these things and preparing stuff so it's like life does not stop just because I'm like uh, so much is changing all at once you know it's like you just have to accept it and move on every day being like you got this bitch so like that's my theme of this video is you got this bitch just do the next right thing for today that's what I do every day when I wake up. I'm like, what's the next best thing for us to follow along this path of moving our entire five acre farm across the country? Okay, I'm sorry for like literally talking for 20 minutes at the beginning of this video, but you needed it, I needed it, we all needed it. Happy 10 years, <laughs> just you and me forever. <laughs> love it you really expect me not to share every waking feeling i've ever had in my entire life with you as soon as i'm feeling it i'm an open book to all links
couple of things. Finley is not only packing the basement, but also some random storage closets up here. And then we realized maybe we should start taking apart the guest room slash office slash clusterfuck of a room that I always wanted to do something with, but it never became what I wanted it to be. That's a whole other story. It's fine, because we're moving out anyways. <laughs> but that bed is packed now, and a lot of this storage closet in our living room is also packed. And I found a lot of stuff, and I put it on the floor behind me, like a couple of things that were just shoved in that closet that we should just give away on a Buy Nothing Facebook group, so I'm gonna do that today. But I wanted to say, while we were just packing and loading some of the U-Haul, we got a package dropped off, and I wanted to show you what's in it, because we got our thank you cards for the wedding. So they're literally just card frames, so you can insert in any photo into the front, and then you can write your little note here. And so I actually ordered too many save the dates. Like I ordered 109, I think, extras. It was just a flop. I don't know why I did that. So now I'm using all the extras to put into our thank you cards for the wedding and just framing the photos like this. And then it's so cutie pie. I love it. So I'm gonna probably be doing this while Finley's on his journey east with the pigs because I'll have some downtime at night and I'm really excited about it. I kind of love handwriting cards, so it's gonna be kind of a sleigh. So that's what's up with us. I'm streaming on Twitch in like a half hour and whenever Finley asks me for help, I help him, but he's pretty much doing everything on his own, so love men. But before my stream, I'm just gonna take photos of these items to list on Buy Nothing. It's a rug, a bow and arrow that's like snub ended, not like a real bow and arrow that could like impale somebody. It's just like a practice bow and arrow set and a little camping sleeping pad. So let's take pics. Later that same evening. I just finished streaming. I didn't show it though, but I was playing Stardew Valley. But I just made Annie's mac and cheese, purple box, and put some field roast sausage on top. This bowl is exploding. This one's Finley's, but mine is not exploding any less. This one's mine. So I'm gonna bring this downstairs to the basement. We're gonna help him pack, work everything into boxes, find places for things, all that jazz. It all stems from this horrible thing wizards have of thinking they're superior to other creatures. The fan is on in the window here, so sorry for the noise. But guys, I just packed most of our games, not all of our games, into this kayak box. And it literally looks like a puzzle. It's so incredible. And I think it still closes. Let's see. Yeah, this is incredible. Can't believe it. I'm gonna tape it closed now. Tomorrow for sure. I've been making iced coffee ever since it started getting warm out. It's fantastic and so easy to make it in the French press. I just make it the same way I would if this was hot coffee, except when I put the grounds in, instead of putting boiling water on them, I put cold water on them. And then I leave the little pulley thing up all night long in the morning. I press it and then I have my coffee. Delish. Can you tell what's been taken out of this room? My sewing cabinet. Finley loaded it into the truck last night because he was like, oh, this would be perfect for the corner. It would be really good size. I said, okay. Then he came up and he said, could I take the dining chairs? All of them? You know, we still can keep our desk chair and maybe these two chairs over here, but the chairs would be really good if I put them. I loaded them in the U-Haul, I said. Take the chips, I don't care. But we literally loaded the U-Haul until 3 a.m. And so I look really tired, but this is gonna wake me up. And the pigs go on their grand adventure today. Woo! Our house is in a state of disarray. This is what it looks like right now. Just boxes, random stuff. The Lego table was taken out last night with all of our games on it, which you guys saw me pack up. All this. Bed's gone, sheets are there. This room just looks like a nightmare. Anyways, let's start loading in these pigs. Okay guys, so instead of doing the wooden ramp thing today, we're gonna try something different first that's a little bit easier for them. So one, 
our pigs can climb these stairs. Two, we did this when we first moved into this house. So we backed our truck up through a little bit of the garden bed up to the front porch here. Sorry if you can hear Larry, he's jealous that Roo snuck outside and that he's not here. Um, and he's just gonna back, back, back it up to here. We're gonna lure them in with treats and delicious food to the front porch and then try to encourage them into their house. Okay. Love that you're wearing your Virginia hat for this momentous day. <laughs> this is a really handsome guy. You love laying in the dirt. Let's go get these pigs. Knock, knock. Ready to move to Virginia for a little bit, Beachers? You ready? <laughs> Say bye to your mud holes, cutie pies. Okay. Got lots of treats here for you. Celery, apples, two special cupcakes for my special girls, and a little pizza. Look. You want any of this? Let's go get in the car. We're going on a car ride. Woohoo! Come on. Keep going, Peach. Keep going, girls. I still have it. <laughs> You're a little monster. She's gonna eat the whole bowl. Come on, Peach, don't get distracted. Peach, that's a hose, it's not food. Right here. <laughs> little adventure, huh? Maybe if I dangle the celery. Don't follow Dad. Look! Ducky's having a delicious treat. Do you want a little? Peachy, keep coming. Peach! Check this out. Do you remember how to do the stairs? Ducky knows how to do stairs. I'm having a little bit of a snack party up here, girls, so if you want to join me. Good girl, Peach. Keep coming. <laughs> Good girl, Peach. Good girl. Peach, do you want a delicious cupcake? Like... Maybe an apple or something really yummy. One pig in. Just gotta find Ducky. How about you stay in with Pete I get Ducky? Ducky, where are you going? She wants a compost pile. So I'll just do a little cuddling up there. Watch your feet. Watch your feet, chicken nugget. You remember the stairs. You like apples? Girl. You want an apple? How about you come over here, Ducky? Delish! Mm. Just out of reach. Okay, we need two of us. Can you ever lift that pallet up here, maybe? Yeah. I just really don't want her to run again. One eternity later. Woo! Both pigs are in. I didn't film Ducky because she was giving it a little trouble. But the pizza is what really brought her in. You love pizza. Good girls. You have enough room to turn around together in there and cuddle up if you want. We have a little thermometer in there as well in the corner. So Finley can check on his phone what temperature it is in the tiny house while he's driving. And we're just putting on their little door so they can't escape. We're leaving a little gap at the bottom so Finley can slide in their water dish for them. The tailgate will be up as well so they can't even really get out. Well, they certainly can't get out. And girls, I'm packing you a couple of homegrown sweeties from the farm so you have some treats along the way, okay? And just know, I love you so much. You're gonna have an amazing journey, okay? Your dad's gonna take such good care of you and I'm gonna talk to him every day. And I'm gonna see you in Virginia so you don't need to worry about anything. Look, there's celery back there. 
I love you, Ducky. You had an amazing four years at this farm, be sure. And now we're going on our next adventure. And guess what? You're going to see more of America than most Americans. Peachy, love you, be sure. Are you coming over or are you just going to be eating? Oh, I love you. I love you so much, Peachy. You're going to be in Virginia and you're going to see chickens. You're going to live with some chickens. Chicky chicky? Are you my little chicky? Okay, let's do eye goop checks before you go because I don't know if dad will do those on the road. Can I see your other eye? Beautiful girl. Beautiful girls. That's good. That's safe. Peach is just gonna take really good care of you, let you know what dad says is going on. Okay, ducky? And I know you can't hear what's going on. You're probably like, what the hell? But actually, it might work in your favor because you won't hear any road noise. You'll sleep right through the night. Just get comfortable, okay, girls? You're going to be able to see so many sights through this little gap. My little gap tooth, be sure. Love you. Love you, Peachy. Love you, Ducky Wucky. 76 in here. It's 70 back there for them. That's luxurious. That's a good temp. 70 is my favorite temp. Okay, just get really comfortable, okay? Really comfortable. Dad's gonna take really good care of you, okay? I love you so much. Best hog dad in the whole world. Bye, Piggy. See you in Virginia. Wow, I can't believe it. Six hours later. Ugh, I'm sad. Look at this. So sad not seeing them here. Their house used to be here. I'm sitting on their feeding mats. And it's just a little sad. But it's like a bittersweet kind of sad. You know what I mean? Like, it's still good because I know that they need to be in Virginia temporarily because obviously when we move with like a giant moving truck and the Lexus if we had done it with the truck and the pigs and the truck also towing a U-Haul trailer, like that would have just been a lot. I just know that it was the best thing for them to leave today with all of the basement stuff packed up and Finley to take them there. And I forgot to say this earlier, but he's leaving the farm truck in Virginia with them and they're gonna have everyday care, be checked in on, they're gonna be living amongst some chickens on the property. Finley's parents have animals, they have a donkey and a horse and chickens so yeah there definitely will be some company for them but they'll have like their own little pasture finley is probably going to be back in like four days or something like that maybe he'll come back on the fifth day i'm not really sure quite yet he hasn't booked his flights yet he'll probably just book a flight home on the day that he realizes you know he's available to because basically once he's there and he unloads the pigs and gets them all set up in their fence and stuff i'm pretty sure he'll have to like either Either build them a fencing area or re-secure another fenced in area that's already on the property because the pigs get out a lot like they literally got out two days ago went to eat apples at our neighbor's farm so you know it's not rare for them to escape and we're not gonna be there to go and find them so he's just gonna make sure that they're you know under high security at his parents house they'll be there until we go to Virginia and meet them in a couple of weeks and and this feels like, you know, a big step in the right direction. But it's also so sad because they've literally lived here for like almost four and a half years. They're native Oregonians. They've lived their entire lives here. So it's really crazy to come out here and not hear their little snorting or whenever I close the back door, we have this like screen door that always slams. And because Peach is the one who's not deaf, whenever she hears the door slam, she comes sprinting to hear on the feed mats because she associates with the back door slamming with me coming to feed them so today I was just going out onto the back porch and hearing the door slam and not hearing their snorts I don't want to cry this is what I meant in the beginning of this video when I said it's hard for me to accept change <laughs> and for some reason I just feel like I have to like explain my crying and be like I'm not sad that they left because I'm excited that you know we're moving on with the next steps but it like doesn't make right now hurt less does that make sense and i know maybe i'm being just a little bit dramatic because like this was obviously necessary like what else were we gonna do not bring them <laughs> it's just like a lot you know to come out here and be like oh no little snorts in the distance <laughs> and, like seeing their mud holes all empty 
it's just sad. I'm just like looking around in the barn here and like seeing all my little memories with them. Like them when they were this big and we would play with them over here in this corner of the barn. And they were like little tiny hamsters. They were so small. <laughs> and we had all of those like wood shavings down. So it literally looked like a hamster cage <laughs> in there. But they were just these little tiny hogs. Like, oh my God, they're so small. Hi, Rue. Hi, Rue. Hi, hi, hi. She's really trying to cheer me up. I'm just having a lot of feelings, but that's okay. Just wanted to share them with you and come out here and see what it looks like now that there's not two fat hogs out here. And Finley is probably in Idaho by now. And I'm pretty sure I just said this, but it's gonna take him like four days, I think, to drive. Because when we do a cross country trip from here to Virginia, it's 40 hours. So that means either you do four 10 hour days or you do three 13 13.3 hour days. <laughs> he's going a little slower since he has so much weight. Like he's not in the Lexus going 80 miles an hour. You know what I mean? He's in the truck, which needs it to be kind of slowed down a little bit. I think he's going like maybe 60 or 55, I think is the speed limit for the U-Haul trailers. He texted me a little while ago and he was like, I honestly think that this might take me four days of driving. And I'm like, that's fine. Just like take your time. They, like I said earlier in this vlog, or maybe I just put text on the screen explaining this but when we evacuated them they were in the truck for three days straight so it's not like they haven't done this before but obviously there's like different circumstances this time and now we've tried to like really maximize their comfort like those girls uh, you know they have a luxurious experience right now compared to us like hiring some livestock shipment company which was never really even on the table for us because I trust Finley I don't necessarily want to pay somebody else to truck my hogs across the country for me and I would just have to hope that they get there okay you know what I mean like if my husband does that he can just text me and be like girls are fine it's this many degrees in the back of the tiny house I just gave them water at this time I just put ice on them right now at this rest stop in this city you know what I mean so I can kind of track all of the logistics but as for what I'm doing other than crying on the ground of my barn right now oh, I've just been working on thank you cards for the wedding really I've done a lot of them i'm almost through our entire registry gift list and then we have like another separate list that people gave us separate from the registry so i tracked all of those on my phone which you guys should really do if you have a wedding like keep a note in your phone and just be like gifts not on the registry that we got you know whether it's a check or you know a little painting that somebody made you or something that you know obviously was handmade and not on zola what are you doing back there my little mountain climber she's being crazy hi larry this is my little guy you kind of like being the only animals around don't you dogs you kind of like being the center of my attention the apple of my eye yeah you're my special little guy. Larry's been with me through a lot of moves. I got you in Koreatown, then you moved to downtown, then you moved back to Koreatown with Mr. Finley, and then we moved to Oregon. Now we're gonna do a really big move. We're gonna go to Vermont, be sure. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? Speaking of the dogs, they fucking love Virginia. When we were there for like so long earlier this summer, when we were having the wedding and whatnot, they were just having the time of their freaking lives, <laughs> just like exploring the property and running around every day so I know that when we're there temporarily that they'll just have the best life ever so I'm not fretting about that I know that this is all for the best god damn it even though <laughs> right now I'm like lonely I am so lonely wow it's fucking incredible out right now look at this guy mm. Love that barn view, am I right? Anyways, I'm gonna go check my mail now. I'll deal with cleaning up this barn later, our landlady said. If you could clean up the barn and make sure that there's no evidence of pigs living there, that would be great. I'm like, all right, we'll break down the entire fence lines, get rid of all the pallets. We'll have to reseed the pasture here with either grass or clover like I have right here to kind of generate growth. We're gonna fill in all of the mud holes as well with their 
compost pile because this is all their manure but it's like composted down and then because last night Finley packed our lawnmower and trucked it across the country we're gonna have to ask our neighbor Steve to mow the lawn for us and we can just pay him to do that and it'll give us a little excuse to say goodbye to Steve before we leave to have him come over and you know mow this damn pasture everything else doesn't really need to be mowed but I wouldn't be shocked if by the time we're moving out at the beginning of September if it did need to be mowed and then this is a whole other thing so this is all blackberries back here and clearly the blackberries have taken over. There's trees back there that we should be able to reach. There's an entire fence line along our five acres back here that we cannot frolic to because we literally can't access it. And we don't own a bush hog. We didn't know we should have had a bush hog upon moving to this property. And I know what people will comment. You should get goats, but no, I'm not going to just buy goats because I want them to clear this pasture. It would also take them days and days. So we'll have to hire somebody to um, get rid of this because because our hickway did not work. In the real country way, the hickway is this. You get in your farm truck, you drive over all the blackberry vines, okay? You don't poison them, you literally just drive over them to flatten them and break them up and hopefully kill most of them. But they're an invasive species, they're literally insane. But either way, Finley has done that method before and it was fine, but this time he did it in this little gap where I just showed you and his truck got stuck because the farm truck is unfortunately we're having some mechanical issue with it where it doesn't actually go into four-wheel drive which is like really tragic and I don't know how to fix that on our Toyota Tundra it's like a 2000 if any of you are mechanics in the comments anyone out there comment below on what we should specifically ask or look into if we bring it to a mechanic because we just took it to the mechanic and they didn't notice it or fix it but anyways after Finley got the car back from the mechanic he drove it in here he got stuck our neighbor John came and had to forklift the car out of here and then that's when he was over here with the forklift and he said you want me to move that tiny house into the bed of your truck and we said yeah and so that's when we really got all the ball rolling with loading the pigs in and all of that stuff too but yeah that's what happened so we need to hire somebody to deal with the back pasture before we leave because our landlady was like hey can you deal with the blackberries and so we're just gonna have to pay somebody to get rid of all of these things. It's insane back here. I literally can't get over it. But every time I look at it, I'm like, God. See, these are the boards he tried to shove under his wheels when he was stuck. But he drove through here, like through the fence in the pasture, got to right here, and then he got friggin' stuck. And I know I'm gonna get comments being like, oh, I would just love to have blackberry vines in my yard. <laughs> Not this many dwellings. It goes on for about two acres. That's farm life, baby. Hear that to the tune of, that's showbiz, baby. Oh, I said I was gonna go check the mail. I never did. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Oregon. The first little plums of the season are beginning to ripen. Summer is really here, y'all. Tomorrow. Okay, hey, I figure I'll just probably end off this vlog here because really all I'm doing while Finley is on his journey, he's safe, the girls are safe, by the way. He's sending me updates along the way and sending me videos of them and just giving me all of the information that I need, so. Just know that they're doing good on now, day two of driving. And while Finley's away, I'm just listing a bunch of stuff on Buy Nothing Facebook groups and trying to figure out what we need to sell or want to sell if we're not gonna give it away for free and just taking photos of those things. And then I'm also just working on all of our thank you cards for the wedding, which I'm about halfway, a little bit more than halfway done with right now. And I'm about to go grocery shopping in a little bit, but before that I need to do a workout and shower and clean this lunch lady vibe of a hairdo that I'm giving right now. My hair is so greasy, it needs a wash so bad. So I cannot show my face out on the town, okay? Even in these country parts without taking a little bit of a shower, all right? I feel like all the tasks I have left for this weekend and stuff aren't really like moving tasks. They're more just like clear out clean out tasks, which I know a lot of you like to see, but I'm not really in the mood to do a whole closet clean out on the vlog right now, honestly. I got too much to do before my stream tonight. And I just wanted to dedicate this vlog to the pig's big journey, their toured pig, as I'm calling it, and the packing and moving of all of the basement stuff. The basement is now a clusterfuck, okay? He completely left it like in piles of stuff to deal with. Just like, sell this, 
try to rehome this. You can give this away for free, but I'm gonna keep all of that. And no, it doesn't really have an order going to it. I wanted to put it in an order, but we stayed up until 3 a.m. packing the truck and now I didn't have time to do it. And I was like, okay, brother, I'll try to make sense of the madness. So that's what my weekend is going to be. And then enjoying a little river day with friends, I think on Sunday, but I love you. Thank you for watching the first installment of these moving vlogs. I will have, I'm sure many more to come because our house is quite chaotic right now, but at least we got the first part done of moving two beautiful souls across the country and getting them settled before we do all of our other tasks. So thank you for watching. I love you. I hope you enjoyed this. When I'm not on YouTube, you can find me on Patreon and on Twitch three times a week. And until the next vlog, I'll see you later. Stay smiling. Bye y'all.